Hey there, fellow adventurers. Today we have a character build that's as devoted as they come. Ready to establish the patriarchy? Oh, hold on a second, folks. I'm getting word. I was meant to say horses. He wants to establish horses. Meet Ken, the charismatic plastic toy on a mission to win Barbie's heart and keep the beach vibes alive. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. All right, let's dive into Ken's epic stats. The first thing you need to build any good character is stats. For Ken, we'll be using standard array. The 15 goes into charisma. I mean, have you seen those glistening abs? They're like miniature waves of their own. And that singing voice, come on now, it's angelic. Next up, the 14 we'll put into constitution. I mean, Ken took that wave like a true beach champ. Got repaired in no time, less than five seconds. He's basically a walking, talking action figure. The 13 will put in strength, because let's be honest, have I mentioned his abs? Wink. The 12 goes into dexterity. Now, that's where he struggled a bit. He might have recovered quickly, but surfing that wave? Oh boy, did that go poorly. I mean, he's beach Ken, not surfing Ken. Moving on to the 10, we'll put that in intelligence. Sure, he can read, but beyond that, let's just say he's not exactly the sharpest beach umbrella on the sand. And speaking of bright up there, his wisdom is awful, which is why we're putting the eight in wisdom. I mean, he has failed jobs, he's failed reading the room, and he even has a lack of understanding of how Barbie feels about him. And let's not forget his tendency to go to war over the small things. Those were now, let's talk about the race Ken would be. At first, we thought human, of course, but no. Ken is a plastic toy, living the action-packed life of a beachside adventurer. You would think that would be a Warforged, but th that didn't really fit either. So, we went with a custom lineage from Tasha's, with a plus two boost to charisma. This guy can sing his way into any toy's heart and turn the entire Barbie land into a brand new hierarchy. Oh, and a new language. Sure, why not? Maybe he'll speak Barbie Ease or Beach Bash Talk. The choice is yours. But we can't forget about his skill proficiency and performance. He has literally hit the UK's top 40. And for the feat, we went with Tavern Brawler. Why? Well, because Ken's got a bag of tricks that would put Mary Poppins to shame. From inflatable pool noodles to sandcastle buckets, he knows how to handle a beach brawl. For his backstory, I'm gonna go with Urchin. Because, as everyone knows, Kins are homeless and live on the streets of Barbie Land. And don't be fooled by his Beach Boy charm. Kins also a master of sleight of hand and stealth. That's perfect for those quick costume changes and literal robberies. Though he does kill the cowboy fit. And to top it off, he's got a cute little mouse accessory. And it's maybe not in the movie, but who cares? Mattel sells that separately, folks. Ken. Barbie, have we ever met? Huh. I would have heard. Alright. Fasten your seatbelts, adventurers, because here comes his level one of Paladin. Armor, weapons, shields, Ken can handle them all. Though, once again, Mattel sells those separately. But the real magic comes with divine sense. Detecting undead and fiends on the beach? Sign me up for that spooky adventure. And let's not forget about Lay on Hands. With a touch, you can heal wounds and cure diseases. Ken can now be the ultimate toy doctor though he does lack the degree to be a real one. Level two brings a choice of unarmed fighting or dueling, depending on how you want to use them. We went with unarmed fighting. Let's face it, Ken's got some killer moves when he's not strutting on the beach. And let's not forget the most epic move of all, Divine Smite. With his pool floaty as a divine weapon, he'll smack those other Kens away like beach balls. Level three, now we're talking divine health. Toys can't get sick, right? Unless, of course, the kid playing with them imagines it, but Ken is a real person in this world, so we don't have to worry about that. And it's time for the sacred oath, the reason we went paladin. The oath of devotion to Barbie. Protection from evil and good, sanctuary. Ken's got her back no matter what, R right? And here comes the big gun, sacred weapon channeled divinity. Smack the other Kens with a glowing tennis racket? Oh, that's definitely fun. Maybe a smite or two, just for good measure. Level 4 brings a much needed ability score increase. Charisma, here we come. 
Let's fit that Ryan Gosling charisma on our toy himbo. And let's just bump up strength too, because odd numbers are a no-go. Level 5 brings extra attack. Double the beachy beatdown, folks. And of course, we finally get the most important feature of Ken. The patriarchy! Wait, no. I meant horses, of course. Fine Steed lets him summon his very own horse. That's the ultimate masculine act. At 6th level, Ken gains an incredible ability. Aura of Protection. Whenever he or his fellow Kens within 10 feet must make a saving throw, they get a bonus equal to his charisma modifier. You know what that means. No more dreaded con saving throws after one too many brewski beers. Anyway, back to business. At level 7, Ken wraps up his paladin journey with one final aura. The Aura of Devotion. You and your friendly creatures within 10 feet are now immune to charm while conscious. Now, I'm sure that won't come into play later on in this build, will it? It's not like Ken's gonna start a revolution based on a misunderstanding, right? Right? I'm just Ken, but I see the love she sees a friend. Level 8. It's time to kick things up a notch with that ultimate revolution starter. Ken is about to embrace his inner bard. And what better class to spark a beachside uprising than this one? At the first level of Bard, Ken gains one proficiency and one instrument. And of course, he's a master at playing guitar. Though, let's admit it, it may still sound a bit like Matchbox 20 on repeat, but it totally counts. Plus, Ken's now even better at handling those horses. Animal handling? Check. He's got it covered. But the real highlight of becoming a Bard is Bardic Inspiration. Ken can now inspire anyone he meets with his epic songs and charm. With more spells and cantrips at his disposal, Ken's performances are about to get a whole lot more magical. Dancing Lights will set the stage for his mesmerizing light shows, and Charm Person will add that extra flair to his already charming personality. And let's not forget about Featherfall, because toys don't go downstairs, they simply float down like the beachy breeze. And then of course, Song of Rest at level 2 of Bard brings a moment of respite even if Barbie isn't entirely swooning over Ken's music. Now let's dive into the third level of Bard, where Ken gains an ability that's about to change the game. Enthralling performance from the College of Glamour Bard. He can now captivate a number of humanoids equal to his charisma modifier with his enchanting music. Maybe that's how he convinced a whole town's population to give him and the patriarchy control. Mm, never mind, we better dig deeper on this. At level four of Bard, Ken takes another ability score improvement, allowing his true charm to take center stage. With better spell saving throws and performances, he's basically as irresistible as all four hours of the Snyder Cut are to Ken's. He's not just charming, however. Ken's words can sometimes hurt. He picks up the vicious mockery cantrip. I wonder if there's a therapist Barbie around to help with that kind of damage. Level five of Bard brings some powerful upgrades. Ken's Bardic Inspiration dice now become a D8, inspiring even greater feats from his fellow Ken's. And with Font of Inspiration, Ken can now fully replenish his Bardic Inspiration after a short or long rest. No shortage of charm and inspiration here. Level 6 of Bard introduces Counter Charm, because our charismatic Bard likes to have charm protection both personally and in a 30 foot radius. Is it a bit redundant? Yes. But I say double the charm protection, double the fun. But that's not all. Ken's beauty transcends the ordinary. With Mantle of Majesty, he casts Command as a bonus action without his spending a spell slot for a whole minute. Unearthly beauty and a Command at his fingertips? That's quite the combo. Bard level 7 brings even more spellcasting prowess. With 4th level spells, Ken's ready for any adventure that takes him into other toy worlds. Charm Monster might come in handy. Maybe in a sequel? In level 15, another ability score improvement. Ken's strength gets another boost. Those abs, combined with his newfound strength, make him a force to be reckoned with. Too bad he didn't invest in acrobatics though. Seems like he still can't do a backflip. At level 16, Ken's bardic talents are reaching new heights, but Barbie's heart remains elusive. The D8 song of rest is soothing, yet not enough to win her over. However, Ken's determination knows no bounds. With fifth level spells, he's ready to take a bold step towards his dream of a kingdom in Barbie land. Behold, the powerful Geus, a spell that could put key figures under Ken's charming control. But there's a catch. How will we keep all the Barbies from showing up for the vote to relinquish control from the Barbies? Level 17 is a stepping stone towards Ken's ultimate goals. 
But first, we need to finish making sure Ken is ready for the big beach fight and is in tip-top shape. He gets magical secrets at this level, and Stone Skin makes Ken more akin to the plastic toy he is, while Mage Armor keeps him fashionable and armor-free. We can also get two more expertises at this level, and we can take Persuasion and Athletics to round off this build. And let's not forget his Bardic Inspiration die, now upgraded to a D10. Even more inspiration is spread among his allies. Level 18 arrives, bringing six level spells within Ken's reach. Mass Suggestion, the ultimate charm spell. With it, he could finally implement the Patriarchy in Barbie land. But wait, Ken still considers Barbie an ally. His aura of devotion prevents her from being charmed. It seems like all of his efforts to implement the Patriarchy have failed. The kingdom is in jeopardy. The kins have resorted to infighting. They're beaching each other off so hard. Level 19, Ken takes level 12 of Bard, a pivotal moment in Ken's journey. It's time for a sit down with Barbie, where he gains wisdom and insight. Another ability score improvement allows him to raise his wisdom from an abysmal eight to a neutral 10. Ken's realizing that he doesn't need Barbie to be happy. He shouldn't rely on her, but instead find happiness within himself. And maybe, just maybe, he'll come to understand that the patriarchy isn't about horses after all. The beach-loving bard's journey of self-discovery takes a profound turn. Love isn't about controlling others. It's about finding your own strength and purpose. That brings us to level 20, the grand finale. With the 13th level of bard, our now enlightened Ken reaches the pinnacle of his bardic powers, gaining access to 7th level spells. And what better spell to choose than Magnificent Mansion? It's time for Ken to have his own place to live, a Mojo Dojo Casa House of his own, where he can have guys nights with his fellow Kens, and maybe even Alan. Barbie, let's go party. And there you have it, adventurers. Our charismatic Ken, the beach-loving bard, has reached the pinnacle of his powers. Let's go over some pros and cons of this awesome character build. First off, Ken's got charms for days. With that sky-high charisma, he can win hearts and influence people like no other. And when it comes to single target combat, oh boy does he hit like a truck, wielding anything he can get his hands on. Not to mention the fact that his build as a toy means that he is resistant to all non-magical bludgeoning, slashing, and piercing damage. But that's not all. Ken is a top-notch supporter. With healing spells, buffs, and multiple protective auras, his allies will be hard to take down while he's still up and singing. Of course, no character build is without its challenges. One thing Ken might find tricky is dealing with multiple enemies at once. His lack of powerful AoE spells might make those large-scale battles a bit tough. And let's not forget about ranged combat. Ken's a master of up close and personal, but if you can't reach his targets, that could spell trouble. Not to mention, with an AC of only 14, he is an easy target. That's a bit of a miss there, Ken. And speaking of charm, some foes might be resistant or immune meaning Ken has to resort to good old combat when persuasion fails. So there you have it, adventurers. Ken, in the flesh, or at least in the plastic. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more epic D&D content. Remember, this build is definitely ken off for any campaign setting. You, too, can play Ken. And as always, we'll catch you on the flip side. Take it away, Ken. I'm just Ken, anywhere else I'd be. Is it my destiny to live and die a life of blonde fragility?